Everyone who said Justin Herbert would be a bust has already been proven wrong. He's the frontrunner for Offensive Rookie of the Year, he broke the rookie passing touchdown record, and he's playing like a top half quarterback regardless of draft year. So over the past few weeks, I watched every snap from Herbert's rookie season so far, and saying I was impressed is an understatement. However, with every young quarterback there are issues, and Herbert is no exception. So today I'm going to talk about what Herbert does well, what he struggles with, and how he can improve moving forward. For starters, Herbert is already among the most talented passers in the league. He has a rocket arm, and his ball placement, which was a big concern going into the draft, is much better than I anticipated. Some of the throws he's made this season would be ridiculous for all NFL quarterbacks, let alone rookies. He can throw a bullet down the seam when the middle of the field is open, he can read leverage and throw back shoulder against stacking defensive backs, and he can air it out when his receivers win over the top. Take a look at this third and long from week three against Carolina. Herbert has vertical routes from his number two and number three receivers to his left, along with a corner from his tight end to his right. He knows that Carolina is in zone coverage because there's a cornerback lined up opposite the running back Austin Eckler, which is a dead giveaway for zone. The beauty of this route concept is that when executed correctly, it can attack all of the basic zone coverages like cover two, cover three, and cover four at the same time. If the defense calls cover three, Herbert can throw a bullet pass to his number two receiver in the hole between the single high safety and deep third cornerback. If they call cover two or cover four, he can hit his number three receiver, Keenan Allen, down the seam between the two high safeties. Carolina called cover four here, meaning each of the defensive backs were covering one quarter of the end zone, leaving a small hole in the middle of the field. Herbert keyed the backside safety to confirm the fact that the defense was in a mofo or middle of field open look, then stepped up in the pocket to buy enough time for Keenan Allen to beat the Mike linebacker, and threw a dart to the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Some of the throws that he makes just pop off the screen. There was one touchdown in week four against the Bucks where Herbert made a throw under pressure to a receiver with no separation that traveled about 65 yards in the air and was right on target. There was another one in week seven against Jacksonville where he held the single high safety with his eyes and threw an absolutely perfect ball down the sideline with pressure in his face. The examples are endless, and even though Herbert might not be the most consistent deep passer, he's shown some really encouraging flashes. Another issue that scouts had with Herbert was his performance under pressure. In college, his pocket presence was poor, he had a tendency to create pressure, and his accuracy plummeted with pass rushers in his face. This was one of my biggest concerns with Herbert after he was drafted by LA, because their offensive line just isn't very good in pass protection. Herbert has been pressured at the 12th highest rate in the league as of week 16, which may not seem terrible, but he's averaging less than 2.5 seconds to throw. So he's getting the ball out quickly, but still being pressured at a relatively high rate. All things considered, Herbert has been dealing with one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, but he has not let that affect his play. His passing stats under pressure have been spectacular. He ranks first in passing yards, second in passing touchdowns, first in passer rating, and sixth in completion percentage. Herbert has time and time again demonstrated the ability to throw accurately under pressure, to buy time in the pocket, and to take a hit after throwing, all of which are essential qualities in a franchise quarterback. While his arm talent and performance under pressure are pretty amazing, Herbert has had his fair share of issues during his rookie season. And as I was trying to figure out what exactly he struggles with, I began to realize that the issues are much more complex than I anticipated. Based on my film study, I thought Herbert was good or at least consistent in all but three games, Week 10 against Miami, Week 12 against Buffalo, and Week 13 against New England. In these three games, Herbert's completion percentage was less than 60, his average yards per attempt was just over 5, he threw more interceptions than touchdowns, and his passer rating was a 65. All three of these teams used a blitz-heavy game plan against Herbert, so on the surface, it seems like he just struggles against the blitz. But after consulting some NFL statistics databases, I quickly found that this is not the case. His issues are more complicated than that, and after watching all of his 2020 tape, I concluded that Herbert struggles against more ambiguous coverages. He generally doesn't do well when he doesn't get what he expected, and there were a couple plays from Week 4 against the Bucks that perfectly illustrate this problem. First, take a look at this play from late in the third quarter. The Bucks originally show a too high shell, but bring the free safety down pre-snap. 
This hints to Herbert that the safety down by the line of scrimmage is blitzing, so he slides his protection to the weak side. The Bucks, however, are also sending the nickelback Sean Murphy Bunting, who's lined up over the number two receiver toward the bottom of your screen. But Herbert has no idea that Murphy Bunting is coming because the Bucks did a great job of disguising the blitz. Usually, when a nickelback is blitzing while lined up over an inside receiver like this, they'll be capped by a defensive back, which you can see on this play from week two against the Chiefs. Look at the way Chiefs safety Juan Thornhill is lined up directly behind Tyron Matthew. This screams blitz from Matthew and should let the offense adjust accordingly. However, on the play that I showed you before, no one was capping the blitzing nickelback, which makes it impossible for Herbert to know that he's about to get blitzed. After he took the snap, Herbert saw the blitz coming from his left and instinctively threw to where the blitz came from. But the pass was broken up because the deep third cornerback knew exactly what Herbert was going to do when the blitz came. What Herbert should have done in this situation is see the linebacker Levante David abandon the middle of the field, which made his tight end Hunter Henry wide open. That is obviously easier said than done, and what happened on the next play really puts Herbert's issues into perspective. This time, he recognizes the blitz pre-snap. He sees four possible blitzers to his right and three to his left, so he slides the protection to the right and tells his running back to chip the opposite edge. This gives him enough time to beat Tampa Bay's all-out blitz for a 72-yard touchdown. The difference between these two plays was Herbert's recognition of the blitz. On the first play, he didn't see the blitz coming and almost turned the ball over, but on the second play, he did see the blitz coming and made one of his best plays of the season. Herbert's difficulty against more ambiguous coverages was the theme of his Week 10 game against Miami and was the main reason for his poor performance. Take a look at this play from early in the fourth quarter. Herbert noticed that Miami did not have a deep safety, which hints at cover zero, so he made a max protection call, keeping his tight end and running back in as blockers. But Miami didn't call cover zero like Herbert thought. They bluffed the blitz by rolling into cover three, and Herbert still could have hit Keenan Allen on his curl route over the middle, but he instead stepped up into pressure and took a sack. On the very next play, Miami showed a similar cover zero look, then rolled into cover three post-snap and confused Herbert into throwing a pick. The quality of Herbert's performance is heavily dependent on his ability to diagnose the coverage pre-snap. It makes his reads more clearly defined, and it compensates for his relatively slow progression speed. The Patriots put together a similar game plan against Herbert in Week 13, and he again struggled to move the ball. Here, the Chargers are in empty, and New England is showing cover zero because there's no high safety and seven defenders in the box. Like Miami though, New England rolled into cover three post-snap, and Herbert's pass to Keenan Allen was broken up by a hook zone linebacker who he thought would be blitzing. The examples of Herbert's struggle to identify and exploit coverages like this are endless, but I don't think it should be a huge concern moving forward. In the long term, Herbert does need to speed up his progressions, which should come with experience, but there is a short-term fix as well. Take a look at this play from Week 12 against Buffalo. Pre-snap, the Bills showed a normal single high safety shell, and Herbert had no reason to believe they were going to blitz. But just before the snap, the nickelback began to creep up into the box. Buffalo called a quarters overload blitz, meaning the defensive backs were each covering a quarter of the field, and there were four blitzers against three blockers on the right side of the Chargers' offensive line. This let the nickelback, Taron Johnson, get into the backfield unblocked, and forced Herbert to make a very tough throw under pressure. But this all could have been avoided. You can't see the play clock on the all-22 coaches angle, but when this play began, there were still 24 seconds left before the ball needed to be snapped. In this situation, Herbert needs to take a hard count to help himself identify the coverage. A hard count would have drawn the nickel back into the box and told Herbert exactly where the blitz was coming from. If he knew that Johnson was blitzing, Herbert could have done a number of things to take advantage. He could have called a screen pass to his number one receiver, Mike Williams, in order to exploit the numbers advantage at the bottom of the screen. Or he could have put Keenan Allen on a hitch and just thrown to where the blitz came from. The point is, taking a hard count is a relatively easy way for Herbert to gain as much information as possible before he takes the snap. It can help tell him where more ambiguous blitzes are coming from and allow him to adjust accordingly. If Herbert doesn't fix his coverage identification issues, he's going to continue to have trouble against well-coached defenses. But I really don't think this will limit him moving forward. His worst games, in my opinion, were against Miami, Buffalo, and New England. All three of those teams are known for their ability to disguise coverages, so it really isn't surprising that he had so much trouble against them. The issues that Herbert has are rookie issues, and as long as he fixes them, which I expect he will, Herbert can be one of the most dangerous quarterbacks in the league for years to come.
That's gonna do it for this week's video, so thank you guys so much for watching. As for next week, I'm currently putting together a compilation of Josh Allen's best plays of the season from an X's and O's point of view, so that should be out before wildcard weekend, but that's all I've got for now. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.